In this section, we're going to revisit this idea of a limit, and we're going to talk specifically about limits at infinity. So be sure that you take uh, good two-column notes, and here we go. So once again, remember that a limit is looking at um, a value. So for here it says as x approaches 2 of this function for the variable in the denominators, we take the limit, we're looking at it from the left and from the right. And we know that if we just plug in a 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, negative 1 over 0 is indeterminate form. So we can also see from the graph that this is a rational function. And so where x equals 2 is a variable, and because the denominator is a perfect square uh, on either side of it, um, they're on the same side of the x-axis. So you can see that as x approaches 2 from the left, it approaches negative infinity, and as it approaches from the right, it goes to negative infinity. So we say that the limit here does not exist, but since it's, they're both going to um, negative infinity, you would say that the derivative, or excuse me, that the limit goes to negative infinity. Okay, so basically there are two types of infinite limits. All right, and so there's a lot of writing here, but there's just two basic types. So you can see here, there's a limit at infinity where it says as x approaches infinity and x approaches negative infinity of f of x, they're related to horizontal asymptotes. So what that says is as x approaches positive infinity, what is y doing? So you're looking at a horizontal asymptote. If it says x approaches a, like it did on the previous page, and it goes to infinity, then we're talking about vertical asymptotes. So this and this are important parts on this screen. So a limit statement that says as x approaches c goes to positive infinity means that it's going to increase without bound on either side. So in other words, something like this is going to act around a, uh, a vertical asymptote at c and then it's going to increase without bound on either side. Something that looks like this one, of course, is another vertical asymptote at C, and it's going to decrease without bound, like the previous screen. So here's the rest of that statement. The horizontal asymptote is if, um, as X approaches affinity, it goes to a number. So if it looks like if you had a horizontal asymptote here, right, you would say that as x approaches from this side, right, it approaches some value L, and as x approaches from this side, out this way, uh, towards negative infinity, that it would approach the same thing. So that's a horizontal asymptote. All right, so here's an example. Let's talk about this a minute. So this goes to infinity on either side. So this is a limit that is looking for where is the horizontal asymptote? Because it's as x approaches infinity. Okay, so one technique, one way to do this, probably the easiest way to do this, is um, take the limit, analyze your function, and you can see that the function, the highest power of the variable is x squared. So divide every term every term in the whole function by the highest power. So divide everything by x squared. So I have 3x squared over x squared plus 2x over x squared. All right, and you can see that the x squared are going to cancel on that, and so you would have a 4 and a 3 down here, and then this would be 1 over um, infinity squared. Well, anything that looks like this is going to go to zero eventually, right? Because your one over infinity squared is going to be infinitely small. And the same thing here, I would have two over infinity, which is also going to go to zero. So the limit as x approaches infinity of this function is four-thirds.
And so what that's saying is, is that there's a vertical asymptote, excuse me, a horizontal asymptote at y equals 4 thirds. So once again, when you have a limit as x approaches infinity, and you divide all the terms by the highest powered term, you're going to get what's called the big little principle, right? So 1 over an infinitely big number is going to be little, and 1 over an infinitely little number is going to be something big. Okay, so I have another one, another example where x approaches infinity. So I'm going to use the same technique. I'm going to take the limit as x approaches infinity. The highest term in top and bottom is x to the fourth. So I'm going to divide all the terms by x to the fourth. And by now you're starting to see, wait, Right before I do this, this is 1, this one is going to go to 0, this one is going to go to 0, um, this one is going to go to 0, this one is going to go to 0. Dang. So basically what I have is 1 over infinity, which does not exist. Now, if you remember from rational functions, you remember that you had three rules. You had that um, if the highest power is in the numerator, if the highest power is the same top and bottom, and if the highest power is in the denominator. And uh, this one has the highest power in the numerator. And if you'll remember, there is no horizontal asymptote. So it kind of matches what we found, which was this, the, that it does not exist. So our next example is a little different. In this case, we see that we're taking the limit as x approaches 3 of this function. But if we put a 3 in here, we get 1 over 0, which is indeterminate. And so what we're finding is that this with a rational function means that we are looking at a vertical asymptote. In other words, we are trying to examine the behavior at the vertical asymptote. So we look at here and we would have um, x equals 3 is our vertical asymptote. It would look like this. And we would examine the behavior at either side of it. And what we would find is that um, it's also big on bottom, so it has a uh, horizontal asymptote here, what it really looks like is this. So if you put in a value that's just to the left of 3, like we put a 2 in here, this would be 1 over um, 1 over a positive, so it would be positive number, but it'd be 1 over 2.9, right? So it'd be really big, or if you put and a one that was slightly bigger than 3, this would be um, also a bigger number, like a 1 -third, so you flip it over, that would be bigger. So this is going to be positive on both sides of that behavior. So we would say that even though it's in determinate form, because it's approaching the same direction from both sides, it would approach positive infinity. All right, so it doesn't mean that the limit exists, because the limit doesn't exist there but it describes its behavior because it is going in the same direction. On the other hand, if you had one that had a vertical asymptote here and it looked more like this, right, at the vertical asymptote it's not going in the same direction, so you would just say D and E. But if it stays together, remember, or it is um, either positive or negative, that would be positive infinity and this would be negative infinity but it does not exist, it just describes its behavior. So vertical asymptotes, once again, take a look here. This is a repeat of what we have done before. And so determine the asymptotes of this last function and, and sketch the graph. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we know that the denominator equals 0 at 
x equals negative 3. So if we find the limit as x approaches um, negative 3 of this function, oops, x minus 2 over x plus 3, right, we're looking at its behavior. So the asymptotes, the vertical asymptote, would be at x equals negative 3. The horizontal asymptote would be the limit as x approaches infinity and the limit as x approaches negative infinity would determine the horizontal asymptote. So you would do this twice. Okay. So once again, if we divided everything in the top and bottom by x, we would end up with 1 over 1, right? x minus 2 over x plus 3. So that would be um, 1. This would also be 1 because that's where your horizontal asymptote is, y equals 1. So you have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. I've taken up the whole page, the whole screen here. But 1, 2, 3, bing, 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 bing. There's your vertical asymptote, and then y equals 1. And this is not a perfect square at the bottom, so it's going to go up and down. So the limit here does not exist. Although the limit, if I did this, from the left would go to positive infinity. And if I did the same thing to the right, it would go negative infinity. So this will give you a good overview of what the types of problems that we're going to work in class. And so I will see you there.